This is gonna get loud. Okay. So I'm Hannah Gibbler, and um, what kind of artist am I? Hmm. Maybe this ash. I work with sculpture. I work with space a lot. Um, but I have a background in material studies, so I also tend to just follow materials a lot. Material, um, like, sometimes it can be kind of difficult to describe what I do because materials come first for me. Um, and I like, I'm interested in a lot of stuff. I have a lot of questions. Um, but materials like wood, metal, are kind of like, foundational things for me, places where I started. Um, but from there, I've sort of branched out to working with, you know, plating processes, fibers, working with weaving. Maybe one way to talk about it is through this series of objects that I've been calling portraits. Um, and there's something that I kind of I have a vague idea for what I'd like it to look like, or a scale of an object. Um, it's kind of hard to describe. It's like in this this object over here. I mean, I don't know if I can come and gesture to it or. I found a piece of material that was about yay big, and then I started to respond to it. See, what does it, what is it inclined to do? And I'm collaborating with it in that process. So I turn it on the lathe. I make a tiny little divot in the bottom. It has this wedge shape on the top. Kind of reminds me of a cup. Um, but it's not a cup. <laughs> it doesn't function in any particular way. Um, at a different time and place, I found a river stone. This basically is a uniquely shaped stone that gets squeezed out of a hillside and a river. Um, it's still really dusty. You know, I still get it's dust still falls from it. But I'm just interested in you know I have this negative space here and this positive space here, and to combine them is something interesting to me. These all have their own qualities. They're all in conversation with each other. And so I, I started noticing this and it was a kind of attention that I was, a pay, I was paying to materials and it just kept going. I'd have these kind of smaller objects that I started calling portraits as a way to point back to what it means to be representing just this material or studying just this material on its own and um, just being curious about knowing more about it. This was the end of a board that would otherwise get discarded like as extra for a project. Like you don't, you can't quite rely on the grain because it's so unruly. Like you see how it's kind of running out the board, really short. But anyway, this also has like this zigzag pattern that makes me think about, um, you know, a critter chewing. <laughs> like it could be a borer. And then if we turn it over, it's like that again. Like I think maybe we're slicing through, uh, um, yeah, some travel. People make, make their lives here, make their art here in a way that's with or without institutional support. Um, Public Space One is a really big part of that for me. Probably one of the biggest parts of that um, for me in Iowa City. It's just that uh, it's a space where, you know, Programming is really flexible. It's based on who's there at the time. And I'm really constantly inspired by like what shapes it takes. It's a space where people seem to be doing a lot of different things at different times. And that's always been important to me, that it's, like, it's possible to be changing and flexible. I love architecture. You know, I love what, kind of investigating what spaces do. You know, you have light and time and sound and uh, material in a room. And as a person in that space, you're reacting to all those things. You know, there's so much actually to explore just in that. This room could be empty and there would be still so much to explore in that space. Making interventions in it, like playing with the scale, putting a form in the middle of it that's made up, constructed, is like yet another thing. <laughs> And I guess I'm interested in the way that's, 
that could happen in a very small way or a very large way.